What if I told you that the most powerful banking entity in the world was laundering money and that its corporate bureaucrats go to great lengths to make sure that their illegal activities are never discovered? Well, right now you're probably thinking that's not news, but stay with me here. The World Bank is an international financial institution that's designated to help developing countries by providing loans on the name of, quote, reducing global poverty. However, the banking giant has been accused of actually increasing poverty by keeping the third world in perpetual debt and in servitude to the first world. But aside from its obvious critiques, there's also blatant criminal corruption taking place at the highest levels of the financial institution. One woman has risked everything to shed light on this truth. She's exposed information that reveals the extent of the collusion between financial groups and foreign and governments. Her name is Karen Hudes. She was senior counsel at the World Bank for 12 years before blowing the whistle. She's joining me now to talk about her experience and what it all means for the rest of us. I'm joined by Karen Hudes. Thank you so much for coming on, Karen. Thanks for having me. So could you briefly explain what the impetus was for you to speak out? What did you see? I was a lawyer and I saw securities fraud. I saw financial information that was not being disclosed to $180 billion worth of bondholders. It was my job to make sure that the financial statements were correct. So first, I reported it up the corporate ladder to the audit committee. When that didn't work, I went to the U.S. Treasury Department. And when that didn't work, I went to the U.S. Congress. Senator Luger wrote three letters to the World Bank saying, don't fire this lady. And they promptly fired me. This means that the U.S. Congress does not have the information that it needs. So they stuck with the problem. After I was fired, three senators asked for a GAO inquiry into the corruption that I was reporting at the World Bank. Senators Luger, Leahy, and Bai. Walk us through what exactly, you know, where was this money being laundered to whom? The money was going every which way because anybody that reported misconduct was fired. So in one case, the borrowers were being over, overcharged. In another case, I was reporting corruption in the Philippines. $900 million worth of money that should have gone to fight poverty in the Philippines instead went to a corrupt man, Lucio Tan, who was in default on his loans. Philippine National Bank went into default. There was a run on the bank. Philippine National, uh, the in investment uh, company tried to bail out the bank for $500 million. And then the board was lied to. And my story is about trying to uncover the cover-up. The cover-up went all the way to Congress. And then it went to 188 ministers of finance. So this is corruption in the entire world. And until it's set straight, what we're going to have is we're going to have a currency war. So you think that this was just a microcosm of what's happening across the entire institution? You just saw one aspect of this kind of laundering. It wasn't just me. There's a group of World Bank whistleblowers. There's one of us from the United Kingdom. There's one of us from Mexico. There's one of us from India. There's one of us from Ethiopia. And we're all reporting the same thing, corruption from top to bottom of that institution. The money's going every which way, but where it needs to go to fight poverty. And so you said that you were kind of stifled. You went to the government, and then you had a couple senators on your side, congresspeople. Um, what of the corporate press? You said that you continuously tried to go to them with the story to cover it, and you were shunned as well. Absolutely. And the reason why I found out, it's because the corporate press is owned by one mega conglomerate all of the financial institutions in the world j just about are part of this scheme to rip off everybody every single citizen on this planet that's what i'm talking about and it's not just um, my idea there was a very accurate report on this from the federal institute of technology in zurich switzerland three mathematicians looked at accurate corporate data on 43,000 transnational companies, and they reported that through very clever interlocking corporate directors, these groups managed to grab 10 times the power than they otherwise had in their finances. So they own 40% of the assets of all of the companies traded on the capital markets of the world, and they own 60% of the uh, earnings for every year. This means that the central banks for the world are issuing paper money with absolutely no accountability to the people who are using this money. And pretty soon, 
in a matter of weeks probably. The whole system is going to come to a screeching halt with something called gold backwardation. Well, let's back up a little bit because, I mean, basically there's no oversight over these institutions. Uh, aside from laundering money, uh, plainly, they're also laundering money offshore, hidden in these bank accounts, offshore bank accounts. I want to talk about how much power the banking system really has over geopolitics. I mean, you just broke down that all of these people are kind of interlocking. Would you say that they control the government as well? Absolutely. What I have documented is state capture. I tried to have information go to the voters before the presidential elections because Robert Zellick was Mitt Romney's national security transition planning chief. CBS wouldn't report it. If the voters don't know who they're voting for, I asked CBS to have a question on international corruption. They figured the American public didn't need to know. So if the, if the public doesn't know what's really going on, then you don't, have, you don't have a democracy, and that's what we're talking about. Can you name any names of who you think are the real power players here? Because I know that you know, if, if a little bit of digging can really reveal who these people are that are kind of pulling the strings here. What you need to do is you need to look at the ownership of these corporations. They're the ones that we hear about all the time, Goldman yeah. Sachs. Yeah. You were talking about um, Bank of America. Uh, they are actually all one bank. That's what happened when we saw the LIBOR crisis. These institutions are one big conglomerate that think they control the world and they think they're above the law, and they're not. What about the, just the, the guys of the IMF and World Bank kind of looking back since you served so long into this institution, what do you think about kind of what they present and sell themselves to the entire world? I mean, the whole structural adjustment policies, keeping the third world perpetually in debt. I mean, do you think that's just an entire ruse to maintain their profit structure? I think these are institutions that, if they're cleaned up, can do a lot of good. They can provide a basis for a peaceful transition. It's very clear that we need, we need to have some regularity in our international financial system. We need to, to, we, what we certainly don't need is a currency war, and that's what we're on track for, unless and until we start to get to the bottom of this corruption. And it's very simple, actually, to do, because most of the people know that the corporate media, 70% of the Americans in a recent Gallup poll, distrust their media because it's owned by these banks. <laughs> Karen, to, to wrap it up, why do you think that whistleblowers such as yourself, obviously exposing this uh, massive corruption within these financial institutions, are not incurring the full wrath of the state as we see as somewhere like Edward Snowden or, or Bradley Manning? That's a very interesting question. I think it's because we have the people behind us and enough people know about us and because we're working together. But I have to say that I'm very curious as to why the media is now covering Eric Snowden. I'm worried that this is to get people riled up when what they really need to know is that I have told all of the ministers of finance, I have told all of the governors, I have told all of the state attorneys general, I bought a bond and I had a lawsuit and 188 ministers of finance settled my lawsuit. It's Eric Holder who's holding up the, the settlement of my case. Well, I won't deny that we have some uh, criminals in, in the government, Karen. Thank you so much for coming on. We'll definitely be following your case and, and covering it as it develops. Karen Hedas, former senior counsel at the World Bank. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me.